couples whose wedding was an absolute catastrophe. What happened? The wedding was nothing as expected but the marriage has been nothing but a blessing. It rained non-stop. The venue was outside with a gazebo type structure. We still held it there. Just closer to the middle so we wouldn't get wet. We had a low budget wedding. So no live band. Just a DJ. We gave him the music for the first husband wife song at rehearsal and all was good. Once it was time for the dance he played the wrong song three times. Until my husband had it and left me standing in the middle while he went to put the damn music himself. We hired a professional photographer and also asked our families to take pics with the three cameras that we had. We have a total of 10 picture for the whole thing. The professional photographer only had 6 good pictures. Everything else was ruined for some reason. The pictures taken with our cameras were all ruined also. This was 17 years ago so I am fuzzy on the details. But all in all, we only got 4 pictures from those cameras. We were to stay at a hotel in the honeymoon suite and then the next day travel to our honeymoon destination. When we arrived to the hotel, around 1 in the morning I think, they had already given the honeymoon suite to a family because they forgot it was reserved. So we had to stay in a regular room. Edit. Just to clarify because a lot are asking. This is a third world country. Very poor. And at the time we had just started rebuilding after a long war. Customer service was non-existing. Technology for the pictures was really really bad. So it was a very different time place from what we would know as normal now. Or what we would expect now. At the time. If things went sideways you tough it out and move on. There was no compensation, refunds, or anything like that. Many years ago I worked in the wedding industry for 5 years. Video. Here's a snippet of disasters. Mother of the groom got really drunk and fell onto the wedding cake. Caught on camera. Best man went to the bathroom. Took his wedding ring off to wash his hands. Left it on the counter. Not even a minute later he went back in and it was gone. Never found it. Only family and friends at the wedding. Mother of the bride spilt liquid foundation down the front of her raw silk dress before they left the house. Had to wear a different outfit. Wedding reception set up an entire wedding for approx 400 guests, with the totally wrong color scheme. Flowers and food. There was a wedding the next day, and unbelievably the bride and groom of that wedding had exactly the same names. First and last. Bride and groom were on their honeymoon. Came back and found their house had been broken into. Every stick of furniture taken. Every gift taken. Every wall broken. Sinks ripped out and glass smashed. Police found out it was the ex-BF of the bride. One bride, unfortunately, miscalculated her monthly cycle. Got out of the car at the church and um. So my cousin recently got married to his long-term partner and the actual wedding itself went really well. The reception directly after the ceremony however was marred somewhat by the bride's parents announcing halfway through the night and completely out of the blue that they would be divorcing. Not my wedding. But the groom kissed me on the dance floor. Touched several other women without consent. The priest was a creep and grabbed my friend's butt. The groom accused the bride of cheating with the bartender. Who is gay and a friend of ours for years. The groom ended up throwing his ring into the woods at the end of the night. The bride stayed in a friend's hotel while he went home and went into a rage. They are actually on their honeymoon at the moment. Idiots. Not my wedding but my parents. I wasn't around to experience it but their friends and family still talk about it to this day. The main culprit was the heavy, heavy rain that caused minor flooding and tons of road closures. Mother was very late to the church. My father broke down convinced that she was going to be a no-show. Not only was the taxi that was taking her to the church late due to road closures had also managed to hit her as she was running to get in causing a small rip and minor staining on her dress. A few members of the bridal party were so late they completely missed the ceremony. At the hotel reception the DJ could not figure out how to get to the venue due to road closures and being unfamiliar with the area. The first half of the reception was basically quiet until the groomsmen found that the restaurant and the hotel had a jukebox. The restaurant let them move it to the banquet hall where they paid quarters for music. Almost half of their guests did not come. Again due to the rain. The hotel was understaffed due to the road closures so food took a very long time to come out. A guest who must have been literally dying of hunger helped herself to the wedding cake prior to it being cut. It really sucked on the day but now they look back on it and laugh. 
Whenever we're at a wedding now and the bride is on the verge of tears due to things not going perfectly my mom will always say. Don't worry about it. I got hit by a car on my wedding day and everything still worked out. Not my wedding. But a close friend's colleague. So much went wrong. But I'll summarize. Unexpected heavy rain. Wedding ceremony shifted to inside venue. Ceiling collapsed from heavy rainfall right on top of elaborate wedding cake. Luckily the bride and groom had a very good sense of humor and I like the venue refunded a fair amount of what they had paid out of goodwill. Two things. 70 more guests showed up than were invited. Turns out Mill was inviting people and not telling us. We ran out of chairs. Food? Everything. Except wine. We had plenty of that. Someone stole the wedding gifts. The father of the bride and his brother get drunk. Nothing out of the ordinary and they are harmless drunks but can get a little mouthy. A fight breaks out and the cops come and of all the people they arrest it's the dad and the uncle. As I said. They are harmless but mouthy and the local cops didn't like being called mother ducker so they beat the it out of them. The uncle was a cop from the neighboring city and protocol is if a cop is arrested the arrested guy's department has to come pick them up. So. The police show up to get their drunken comrade and see that he's being tuned up and that doesn't go over very well and guns are drawn and words are exchanged but nobody is hurt. This goes to court and the judge's only statement is. There's a fight of 50 people and the only two you arrest is the father of the bride and his brother? Case dismissed. But that wasn't the end of it because they still had to deal with the local PD beating up a cop and his brother. Sadly, the blue wall was in full effect and the uncle cop wouldn't testify against the guys who beat him up. The bride and groom had a great time and didn't know anyone went to jail until after the reception. I was a groomsman in a wedding for my uncle and his fiance. I was maybe 14 and pretty nervous. I stood up straight as a board. Knees locked apparently. It turns out when you stand up with your knees locked you start a pass out timer. My timer ran out during the vows. My recently wedded mother was losing her it. Arms flailing wildly in the air as she ran to check on me screaming. Oh my baby. My baby. Over and over. The wedding was paused as 10 people rushed to save me. We still watch it on VHS from time to time. Pretty funny these days. My other uncle didn't put me in the wedding party a couple months later. Never found out why. My wedding was awesome. But there was some craziness. An ambulance was called when one of my groomsmen decided to take a bite out of his pint glass and eat it. On a dare he drunkenly made to himself. My wife and I only learned of this after the fact, as they were good about keeping it away from us. We had our roommate become a reverend online, Universal Life Church, to marry us who did a great job. But many of the guests thought we just hired a Catholic priest. We come from Catholic families. For example, we just referred to him as Reverend less than first Nama more than. Several friends were impressed with the Reverend busting moves on the dance floor and then expressed surprise when he was drunkenly making out a large black man. We had an open bar until midnight and then a lower key cash bar for 2 hours after that. Most guests stayed at the venue which was also a hotel. Our priest and someone described as a large black man were observed stealing a bottle of grey goose from the cash bar. So the next morning when we were finalizing everything we got to pay $300 for it or they could call the authorities. Also, we had given our reverend a bottle of Johnny Walker, along with the other groomsmen. But he just never opened his groomsmen gift. My sisters. As we were sitting down to eat, a guest started screaming. The groom's mother went into cardiac arrest. I called 911. They came and attended to her and as we were outside watching them load her into the ambulance, I heard more screaming. Someone ran out and told me that they had better come back into the venue. I run inside and see my grandfather laying on the floor. I ended up riding with him to the hospital. I think he just fainted from the commotion but we didn't know that at the time. They took both of them to the same hospital. Doctor look at both of them as they were being wheeled in and remarked must have been one hell of a party. My in-laws are from a country and culture that does huge elaborate weddings. My husband is their only child. I am not a member of their ethnicity or religion. To say they were disappointed with my desire to have a low key. Simple wedding is a massive understatement. Edit. I'm not saying where they are from. Stop asking. My aunt and uncle were getting married outside in fall. At a beautiful garden. All the guests arrived but the priest did not. 
Finally they got a call from the hospital saying the priest had food poisoning. So they grabbed a waiter, sent a groomsman to the Halloween store, and had a wedding where they were married by a suspiciously waitery looking priest. Not my wedding. Thank god. Friend sister got married. Big Italian wedding. No one but the bride is sure about the groom. Mom is helping the bride on with her dress and saying, you can still back out. I promise I won't say anything about the money. One hour into the reception the bride is drunk off her ass in the lady's room. Screaming I've made a terrible mistake. Marriage lasted, I think, 4 months. Then she ran off with his best friend and he, the groom, shot himself, comma. My wedding took place in Phuket during the 2004 Indonesian tsunami. Not during the actual tsunami of course. It was scheduled for later that day. As a person getting married on Saturday, I will be watching this thread with great interest. A friend's wedding. Worst one I've been to. 1. One of the bridesmaids said she would be part of the party and play the piano for the whole ceremony only if the bride refused to use a submit to husband's will bullet during vows. Bride agreed and then an hour before the ceremony told the bridesmaid that she was going back on her promise. Have you ever heard wedding music played angrily on a piano? How about having the piano player need to stare at you while you're in the pews the whole time to try and keep their cool? 2. During the sermon portion of this wedding, the pastor started the speech with if there is one thing I know about this marriage, it is that this will not last. It, additional detail sort of requested and now provided. The pastor followed his statement up with some bullet about real marriage not starting until you get to heaven. This marriage on earth never lasts, and then it lasts forever. And he used a ratty self-centered metaphor to emphasize the point. And that was the entire sermon. 99 stroke 10 would not attend this ceremony again. My wife and I had a beach wedding planned in Key West. We were on a cruise, but had some family on the hot with us and some who flew to Key West directly. Long story short, it was too windy and we couldn't safely port in Key West. We enjoyed the rest of the cruise and just did our vows at the reception we had planned back home. Now we celebrate two different anniversary dates and it's a fun memory. Not mine but at my sister's wedding, marrying a marine she just met, I got into a fist fight. Best man threw up during speech. Her dress caught on fire. My uncle announced he was leaving my aunt for a 21 year old. Drunk cousin spilled the beans about my sister being pregnant to my very conservative grandma and we all got food poisoning for the caterer. Hopefully her next one this winter is better. My friend's venue burned down during the reception. They were in the paper and on the evening news. The venue made things right with all of it. But that was a heck of a way to start a marriage. My mom used to do music at weddings. She said the worst one she ever did was when the bride was 8 months pregnant with twins. The groom's family hated her for not having an abortion. Not giving the kids up for adoption. Wearing white at the wedding. Trapping him. ETC. Real awful stuff. Anyway. They all still show up for the wedding. But refuse to stand when the processional starts. For a church wedding where you're supposed to stand. Minister asks what's wrong. They tell him in the service and say they're protesting the wedding. Minister ends up yelling at them and says they'll stand or he'll kick them out of his church. On the other hand, my mom said the best wedding she ever did was a couple who wanted to be married as quickly as possible. Processional. Vows. Recessional. Just over a three minute ceremony. My uncle decided that I should run the camera at the wedding since I was the most technically literate out of the family. What he failed to realize was that I was technically literate because I pressed all the buttons to figure out what they do. So his wedding video is a combination of weird zooming, different lighting settings flashing on and off, and parts cutting in and out as I fiddled with other settings. The last minute of them walking out of the church looked great though once I got everything dialed in. A off topic but I love that one story about the future mother-in-law that insisted on wearing white to the wedding so the maid of honor took matters into her own hands and accidentally spilt red wine all over the mother-in-law's dress. Maid of honor legit took her job seriously and the bride totally made the right choice with her ha ha. My old roommates decided to have an outdoor wedding in 120 degree weather. It was not fun for anyone there. My cousin got married and her family is Mexican. Groom's family are Irish. 
They all went out the night before the wedding and of course got smashed. And one of the Irish family members asked to see a watch of a Mexican family members. He put it on and walked away. That turned into a drunken brawl between the entire groom's family versus the entire bride's family. The groom was late as he and all the Mexicans were taken to jail on assault charges. While the Irish guys were let go. The wedding was hours late but happened. Mother-in-law made the wedding about herself. Not the biggest issue though. She did two things I'll never forget. One. Made the table layout for our guests and completely left off the family friend and his wife that gave performed the funeral service for my mother who had passed less than a month before my wedding. Two. Again my mother-in-law. Drunk as hell already on wedding wine before we even started getting dressed. Approached me right as we were doing the group pictures and said congratulations. Looks like I'm now the new mom. And then she noticed the Raja filled look on my face and quietly said, in law. She was sitting next to the rose I had placed on my mother's chair before the service started. Needless to say, that entire day was an emotional roller coaster. Oh. And the night before at the rehearsal dinner, my dumber sister who was a bridesmaid totaled my mother's car she was illegally driving. While intoxicated, right in front of the restaurant and had my soon to be wife hold her purse while she spoke to the police without telling her there was a pipe and bag of weed in it. I'll never forget May to June of 2017. 1. The DJ took the money and ran, went out of business and didn't bother letting me know. So we played iPhone music on a little speaker all night. 2. There were two. 2. Separate fires. A grease fire from the catfish being fried on site. And a fire from the fireworks set off at the wrong time, right after the ceremony. When it was still light out. Although if they'd been set off at night, everybody would have been too drunk to put out the fire. So I guess that was a good thing. 3. It was about 20 degrees warmer than usual for the season. So I was absolutely dying in my very elaborate dress. Which wasn't finished until two days before the wedding because the sempstress was fired and nobody at the boutique bothered to check on her work until my mother swept in and started kicking ass. That entire chain went out of business a year later. 4. I ended up hating most of the pictures. The photographer was not very creative and I ended up having to direct her for most of the shoot. Which was exhausting. 5. Bonus. A hurricane hit our honeymoon destination the day before we got there so it was pouring the entire time except, of course, the day we left. On the other hand, people still tell me our wedding was the prettiest they'd ever been to, and the actual ceremony was the most moving experience of my life. I would do so many things differently if I could, but a wedding isn't a marriage, and my marriage is pretty great. My mother-in-law accidentally on purpose destroyed our favored boxes. Our photographer had a stroke before the wedding but assured us she would still come and take pictures. She came. But without her camera. Our cat peed on my wife's wedding gown then ran away the night before the wedding. Forcing the bridesmaids to hunt through the neighborhood at night for it. The wedding cake was disgusting and in the wrong colors. The restaurant that was to host our rehearsal dinner canceled at the last minute. Leaving us to cram 50 some people in the kitchen area of a local seafood place. They were extremely kind and accommodating. The mother and father of the bride showed up 10 minutes before the wedding. Not even dressed. Wanting us to help them get ready. And for good measure. On our honeymoon. We had the license plate stolen off our car. Happily married 10 years now. Reception. We forgot to grab my wife's dress so I borrowed her car to get it back. Forgot to take off the emergency brake. I ripped a tire trying to avoid hitting someone when the brakes got too hot. My best friend got engaged and took a total hands off approach to wedding planning and let her FMIL make pretty much all the decisions. As her friends and bridal party, we were surprised because things weren't really her style. But figured, whatever, it's her wedding. She finds out, after all the deposits and down payments have been made, that she has a plastic anemia which has been causing her severe depression. Complete exhaustion and is the source of her apathy. She spends what would have been the time for the bridal shower, bachelorette party, etc. In the hospital or recovering. Finally felt better enough to attend her own wedding. Wedding would have been nice despite being the total opposite of what my friend probably would have planned for herself but. It was unseasonably cold and it rained. I threw up the entire time of my reception. But. 
Hey. I was fine for the ceremony and got married so the day was a success. Ladies. Always size up your wedding dresses and never assume the dress shops have any idea what they're ordering for you. I went off their recommendation for size and it was way way too small. Of course. The wedding industry doesn't do returns exchanges. So you're stuck with what you ordered. I couldn't get it let out at all. And would like to add this plus the 98F weather that day to the outcome of my health. P. BTW I was recommended a size 0 when I'm typically a 2-4 in dresses. Not way off. But wedding dresses apparently come small anyway. Woo. A family member's almost wedding. Groom got cold feet and left a few days before the ceremony. But as the bride's family had traveled from all over we decided to stay at the hotel and have fun anyway. On the day their ceremony should have been. A dead baby blue whale washed up on a local beach. So we went to see it. On the way to see said dead whale. A dog owned by someone and the wedding party went missing. He fell off a cliff and was found by coast guards that evening. On the upside. She's happily married to a way better guy now. Not my wedding. But I was working a wedding for dinner service and during the recreation out in the yard of an event hall. As the bride was walking down the aisle. The automatic sprinklers turned on under everyone's chairs and everyone went running and was soaking wet. Honestly. It seemed they thought it was more funny than anything but I can't even in a gene. A bandmate of mine was playing a wedding and after finishing the first set they were shown into the green room and told that a small selection had been prepared for them to eat. They started tucking into the above average rider and thinking they were glad the food was good because the pay wasn't up to what they normally charged. Turns out they had been shown to the wrong room and had inadvertently eaten all the wedding food. Cake and everything. The ham sandwiches and cans of coke were in the next room. Groomsman here. There was a massive power outage in Seattle. Power was out for a day and a half. The power came on in time for the wedding. Which was great. The food they served was not great. It wasn't refrigerated because of the power outage. About 70% of the guests got food poisoning. Including me. The bride had a case so bad she spent her wedding night in the emergency room at the hospital. It really messed her up and she had to go to therapy for it. My two wedding stories. Separate weddings. Not mine. Attended a wedding that was to have a mariachi band as entertainment. Mariachi bands apparently like to make an entrance so they usually walk in while playing without really announcing themselves beforehand. Problem was. There were two weddings going on at this venue at the time. Large convention center hotel. And the mariachi band barged into the other. Non-Mexican. Wedding first. I can't imagine the confusion caused by a mariachi band unexpectedly arriving at your wedding reception. At a different wedding, a bridesmaid threw up at the altar during the, very traditional, ceremony after imbibing, apparently, far too much the night before. Coworker told me this a few weeks ago and I can't stop laughing. Photographer quit the day before the wedding and the bride's dad didn't tell her because he didn't want her to stress. The day of the ceremony. She saw her dad directing the photographer and micromanaging him before the actual photos. She tells him to stop and let the guy do his job. Turns out, her dad, a cop, got a crime scene photographer from work to do the photography. Not me, but my baby sister was in a wedding in Houston in the middle of the summer. AC went out before the ceremony. Easily 110 plus. My sister was the flower girl and threw up during the ceremony. I believe some of it got on the bride's dress. And then she passed out. My parents were mortified. The couple were really chill about it though. Edit. Knit. I ended up married. It was awful. February 1998. I was living in Israel at the time. The day before our wedding we were doing some last minute stuff and we got home late at night. I turned on the TV to catch up on some news and they were reporting that two army helicopters crashed during training killing 72 soldiers. He didn't cancel the wedding but it was a sad one. Then after it was done our videographer stopped on the way home at a makeshift vigil that people were setting everywhere. He forgot to lock his van's trunk and someone stole some of his gear together with the tapes of the wedding. We never recovered them. Not mine but I used to work on cruise ships and people would come to get married all the time. One of the weddings I worked the bride forgot the dress at home and the groom forgot his passport which means he couldn't board the ship. The only problem is they lived two hours away. 
still not sure how that ended up for them. Right after we said I do, my father-in-law collapsed and passed out. He came to briefly and then went down again while we waited for the ambulance to arrive. He vehemently did not want to go to the hospital but was finally convinced and admitted for the night. Luckily he was okay, just dehydrated and embarrassed, and we were able to pick him up the next day.